Hey guys, my name is Nagura and today we're going to be talking about the recent announcement of the patch 9.0.5 of Shadowlands. So I know I'm going to be a little bit late with this video because they always announce these kind of things when I'm asleep. Thank you, Blizzard. <laughs> but I thought I'm going to do a video anyway just to uh, share my thoughts with you guys and I also want to know what you guys think about it. So let's go straight into it. This is the announcement of the patch. They basically said that it's already going to be available on the public test realms and they also said that they're going to expect their release to be in March, which is nice. Then they're talking about the fact that this is going to be a little bit of an unusual patch because they're focusing mostly on systems which in my opinion is really nice because in the past it almost felt like if a system they added didn't work out the way they wanted then they almost just left it and added a new system on top and hopefully people like the new system. If you think about BFA, they had Acerite traits at the start of the expansion, people didn't seem to like them and instead of trying to fix the system, they added new systems on top of it, like the essences and stuff, right? So I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm really glad they're actually trying to fix the existing systems and basically dedicating a whole patch to it. I'm personally really happy about this. Let's see what exactly they want to do. First of all, a really nice change about the gearing system in M+. So they want to return Valor points. The way they describe they want to do this is they basically want you to earn Valor points through Mythic Plus and weekly Covenant callings. And there's going to be a weekly cap. So this is a currency just like Conquest points for PvP that you can earn through Mythic Plus and uh, the callings. And then you can upgrade items that you already earned from doing Mythic Plus to a certain item level. Now, the way they want to do this is they want you to initially be able to upgrade it to item level 200 without having any sort of requirements, as long as you have the Valor points. Then later on, they want you to upgrade it to 207, as long as you have the Keystone Explorer achievement. That's going to be a newly added achievement that is completed if you do all Mythic dungeons on five or higher. So you need to do Mythic plus five or higher on all Shadowlands dungeons. Then you can upgrade it to 207. And if you have the Keystone Conqueror achievement that is all Shadowlands dungeon on Mythic plus 10 or higher, then you can upgrade your items to 213. And if you have the Mythic Keystone Master achievement to do all plus 15 dungeons, then you're going to be able to upgrade it to 220. The upgrade costs for the items will vary by item slot. So that's just going to be exactly like PvP conquest points, right? If it's a weapon, it's going to be more expensive. If it's a belt, it's less expensive, for example. First of all, I'm really, really glad they're adding this to the game. This is exactly what people wanted because people really complained about the fact that uh, Mythic Plus is just kind of left behind compared to PvP gearing systems and compared to raiding systems as well, raid gearing systems, because... The highest item level you can get is 210. Of course, you can get 226 from the weekly vault. But the other aspects of the game can also get the items from the vault without doing M+. So therefore, that's not something unique to M+. And so it just seems like you're done with 210 and all the other uh, aspects just get much more loot or much Maybe not much more loot because M+, is probably the one aspect of the game that gets the most if you're spamming it, but they get the lowest item level loot because they're kept at 210, while all the other aspects are kept higher. So in my opinion, this is a really good change. It's just a little bit questionable why they're capping it at 220, because that means there's still gonna be the lowest item level aspect of the game compared to PvP and raiding, right? Of course, they're raising the item level now by 10 item levels. It's gonna be 220 now instead of 210. But it's still a kept currency, as it says here. It's a, it's a weekly kept currency, just like Conquest points. So capping the item level at 220 seems a bit weird, because it's almost not going to be worth it for these players that do high and plus to even upgrade the items. They, they still want the 226 items from the other aspects, right? It's nice that they add this to the game, but I don't think this is good enough, in my opinion, because it's just not 226 and it's just not 233. So you always still have to just go into these other aspects of the game to get those high item levels. I do personally think that the reasoning behind Blizzard not wanting to give M plus players higher loot is because they do not want to devalue the raiding loot. 
Because raiding loot is a weekly cap, of course, and raiding loot is something that for PvE, I think should always be the most important, at least in Blizzard's mind. Blizzard thinks that raiding loot should always be the highest item level loot and it should always be more important than M plus loot because it has always been like that, right? Raiding was always this big thing. And let's be honest here, I mean, designing the raids is also like a, a big thing for Blizzard too and the whole story revolves around it. So if people stop playing raids because uh, you get higher loot than M plus, then that's gonna be a bit awkward. So I do think that's Blizzard's concern and that's why they kept it at 220. So people still want to mythic raid and people still want to do the raiding. Now, I personally think that this is probably the wrong approach to deal with this issue. I do think that instead of capping the loot on lower item level for M+, compared to raiding, they should just give you something in the raid that you cannot obtain in M+, because the only thing you can upgrade with those Valor points is the M plus items. So maybe the solution is to just not give you certain items in M plus that you can only obtain from the raid, like tier sets, right? If you can get tier sets, which they said they will bring back anyway, they said they will bring it back, then people are gonna be raiding anyway, right? Because tier sets are always gonna be better than not having a tier set. So even if the bonus from the tier set is not super huge, people still want it. And therefore I do think people are still gonna be raiding to get these kind of sets and possibly also other things that you could put into the raid that doesn't drop in M+. I'm gonna give you an example. Maybe don't let trinkets drop from M+, anymore. Something like that. So that way you can still get really high item level from M+, but you won't be able to get your tier set and you won't be able to get good trinkets. So you still want to go into the raid to do that, right? So I do think this kind of solution would be better than to restrict the item level for M+, if that is their goal. At least I assume that is their goal, that they don't want to devalue the, the rate items by you know putting it on 220. If that's not their goal, then I don't know why they would cap it at 220. I really can't think of any other reason. I do think um, raising the item level higher to 226 and making it upgradable by doing all plus 20s in time just add a new achievement, say you have to do plus 20s in all Shadowlands dungeons and then you can upgrade the items to 226 and your weapons to 233. I do think that would be totally cool if there's tier sets in the raid and if there's trinkets in the raid that maybe don't drop in M+. Something like that. Either way, just, you know, wrap up my thoughts about this. Valor points good, capping it at 220 bad. <laughs> All right, now we're going to be moving on to the Covenant and Legendary tuning. All right, so the TLDR of this paragraph is basically that they didn't want to change Legendaries and Covenants too much between the release of Shadowlands and now, because uh, they don't want people to feel as if they invested so much into getting a Legendary and now they want a different one because they got changed or they don't want to feel like they invested so much time into one covenant and now they want to play a different one because they got changed. So they want to dedicate the patch to it because they feel like with a patch like this, people have enough time to, you know, change their covenant, have enough time to farm enough soul ash for a different legendary and so on. So I like that approach. I think it's good. I'm really happy about the legendary tuning because as we farm more and more soul ash, I do like the fact that there's different legendaries that you play in different aspects of the game. I personally would be a big fan of that if that would always be the case. You know, if you really have like multiple viable legendaries, like in Legion. In Legion, we had multiple different legendaries that were good in different kinds of situations. And you kind of played a lot of different ones, which is really something that I want to see for Shadowlands as well. And I hope that is the direction they're going into. I do hope they're changing legendaries as in like, this is good for... Mythic Plus, this is good for single target, this is good for spread out AoE, this is good for I don't know what, right? I do think like some people have an issue with legendaries if you play multi specs. So let's say you play Guardian Druid and Munkin and Rested Druid, then all of a sudden, if you need three legendaries for one spec, then you would need nine legendaries in total. 
which of course is an issue, but the longer the expansion goes, the more soul ash we're gonna be having and the less of an issue it's probably going to be, right? The only thing I'm a bit worried about is the covenant balance that they want to introduce because I know they don't wanna go away from this whole covenant thing. And right now, like at, until this point, I don't think there even were that many issues with covenants. I think most people are okay with how covenants went. But the problem is that if they balance covenants more and more, it's actually going to be worse for certain areas of the game because you cannot balance all covenants for all aspects of the game equally. That is literally impossible. Literal impossible thing to do, right? So let's say they balance them for raiding. Let's say each covenant is going to be similarly good for raiding. But for M+, one covenant is much better than the other. And then for PvP, a completely different covenant is better than the other. Now, all of a sudden, like, what do you do, right? Now, if in the raid it doesn't matter, so that's nice. Uh, you can play everything a little, which is cool. But then for M+, you need this covenant. And for PvP, you need the other covenant. And if you don't have it, you just feel bad. Because all of a sudden, you're so much worse. And I know they're promising these kind of balanced things about the covenants. But that's just not going to happen. And we know that, like, <laughs> this whole balance thing is just not going to be a thing. And um, they do say something like, they want to change covenants that found the least amount of play, which basically just means we're going to have even a harder choice between covenants. Because let's say you play Moonkin. Moonkin had, like, Kyrian and Night Fae, and they were kind of close. And if you're Kyrian, you're fine. If you're Night Fae, you're fine. You can just choose either of them and you're going to be good, right? But then all of a sudden, if they're buffing Necrolord and now they're buffing Venthyr and then you have to choose between all four, I feel like it's just going to be more of a problem than uh, anything else, really. I'm not sure what you guys think about this. Let me know in the comments below. In the end, I think the people who don't care if their covenant is like really good or not, those people already play whatever they want anyway, right? And for people that do care about their best covenant, they want to do the most DPS and whatever, they will always pick the best. So them trying to balance them more seems like a weird thing because then all those people who want to play the best covenant will just switch to whatever covenant is best now. And all the people who don't care about the best covenants, they're just going to stay the covenant they already are because they don't care. So in my mind, it just seems a bit silly. And now that Shadowlands is out for a couple of months, we saw that lots and lots of people just choose the Covenant based on what's best. Like, let's be honest here, it's not just like the top 1%, it's not just the top 5% of players, it's also not the top 20%. It's like almost everyone who chooses their Covenant based on whatever is considered the best Covenant for that spec or that class. By balancing it more, which... I mean, yes, I guess it's nice for some people to say, oh, I really wanted to play Night Fae. And now that Night Fae is like buffed a little and it's not that much worse, I can play Night Fae now. For those kind of people, it seems nice. But I don't think that's going to be that many. I think most of the player base are still just going to play playing the best. Even if it's... So let's say this is your best covenant, this is your worst. And if they balance it, it's going to be like this. Yeah, so it's, it's a little bit closer, but most people are still just going to play the best, you know, because that's how people are. People want to do the most damage. People want to have fun and be the best. And then it's also about community perception too, right? It's not just about people wanting to do the most damage. It's also people wanting to get invited into groups. Because if I know the best covenant for Munkin is Night Fade, let's say, and I queue up for a key and I'm a Necrolord, and then that the leader of the key just says, well, no, what do you mean? I'm not going to invite a Necrolord, Moonkin. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not just about what people want to play, but also like getting accepted into groups and getting accepted into guilds. If you play a covenant is considered bad for your spec, then it's also just going to be harder for you to do anything. Covenants are nice. Like, I like the Covenant halls. I like everything about it. But I do think that Blizzard really might just have to give in a little and let people switch more freely. You can still have some sort of cooldown with the switch, but maybe make it just less grindy and less punishing for switching because then people can at least 
try out new stuff. I don't know, what do you think about this one? What do you think about covenants in general? And what do you think about them trying to balance them more but still stick to the same system? Let me know in the comments below. I quickly just wanted to talk about one more thing that I saw by Ian. He was tweeting and basically saying that raid gearing needs help too, but the static nature of raid loot tables complicates mid-tier solutions. We want to get dungeon improvements out ASAP as we continue to discuss the right approach for other gear sources like raiding and world content. So basically what he's saying is that they can't really change the gear system in the middle of Castle Nathria because that would be weird for guilds who are still progressing. So they are looking into that for maybe the next raid here, which is something I really like because right now raiding just really seems like you're getting high item level if you do mythic. But the items that drop are so few. Like, it just feels so bad with the removal of bonus coins and lesser amount of items you get from the raid. Sometimes it feels like you're do you're clearing a whole raid on heroic or mythic or whatever, and you get, like, one item or zero items. And that feels bad, especially because it's a weekly lockout. And I do like the fact that they're addressing this kind of issue. That's it about my thoughts on this patch. I'm sorry that it was a little bit longer, but I just wanted to get all of my thoughts out on this issue. And I really want to know your thoughts as well. So please, please do let me know in the comments below what you think about all of this. If there's any solutions you have, uh, keep in mind, none of these things are final. These are just their initial thoughts about uh, what they want to do in the future and you can test it on a PTR. So if you have any sort of issues with this like I do or any concerns, any solutions, any ideas, then do let me know in the comments below. That's always going to be super helpful. And we now realize that Blizzard is actually listening to us, right? Blizzard is listening to our thoughts, to our complaints, to our solutions, to our ideas. So do let me know your thoughts, your ideas as well. Instead of just criticizing what they do, also try to come up with solutions for it as well. Uh, that would always be very, very much appreciated. And yeah, just let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.